So when I took the job, COVID didn't exist in Texas as like part of our normal day-to-day -day routine. And then as the months progressed, like at the end of March, I came here, we were in shutdown mode. Coming to a new district is like coming to a new country. You just kind of have to learn the customs, the acronyms, the uh, ways of going about business as you go. And I, I think one of the things that I would give credit to is just the team around here. They've been so helpful and wanting to um, help me learn. To every student that's out there, the teacher is the most important person in our school district. And so now how we serve our teachers is totally different. So during emergency remote learning, um, I had some expectations, I guess, because I knew all these cool and great things that I could do. Um, but it ended up not happening the way that I thought it would. And so I had a really rough time <laughs> from March until May. I was, um, I missed my kids. I missed seeing them. I missed interacting with them. I, um, it was, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Currently, I am teaching English for summer school virtually from my home. What I have loved about the past two weeks is that I am teaching. What I am doing right now is nothing like the emergency distant learning that was implemented in March and through May. That was not teaching. But right now, every day, I am teaching. It has been awesome. The, the biggest thing that made it different was that kids were required to show up every day. So every day at 10 o'clock, they knew they had class and they showed up. After class, I gave them an hour, hour and a half break, and then they showed up for their one-on-one -on -one conferences, which were 10 minutes. Sometimes they took five, sometimes they took 10. And in the one-on-ones, that was just, it blew me away because in my normal classroom, I confer with my kids every day with what they're reading, what they're writing. And I squat down beside their desk and I lean in and whisper and I write things down. But virtually, we obviously can't do that. But what I found virtually is that those kids by day two, like day two, they don't know me and they were sharing and they were opening up and being very vulnerable in ways that I couldn't, there's no way that that could have even happened in a real classroom because there's five other, you know, seniors sitting at that table and oh, I might not want to say that to where somebody can hear, but it is just one-on-one. -on -one. Our students, and I may cry and I don't mean to, but our students are lonely. Our students are missing missing interaction. I'm missing interaction. And so, but we can do that virtually. And that was just so filling that, it, I mean, it, I woke up with a purpose again. If someone had told me a few years ago even that I wouldn't have cancer when I was 16, I wouldn't believe them. I would call them crazy. When I got diagnosed, it wasn't, I wasn't really sure what it was gonna be like, but uh, once I started getting the chemotherapy, they explained to me that my uh, immune system would be compromised, which means I couldn't come in contact with pretty much anything or it would severely impact me, especially not COVID. So um, I had to take a lot more precautions than normal people do. It was difficult not being able to see certain people because they're kind of like holding me up and they're the pillars supporting me. When I first got this, uh, they told me I couldn't go back to school. Um, and then only a couple months later, everyone else was gone from school. So it was kind of relatable in that sense, I guess. Well, I miss all of my teachers actually, because uh, they were all, all really great teachers. It's a lot easier to learn in person with an actual teacher. And if there was one thing personally that I really miss, it's probably being able to see all of my friends and share a few minutes with them at least a day. Right now, I have three weeks of radiation left, um, but after that, it'll be over. I'm very proud of myself for being able to make it through this, um, but I know my whole family is too. And honestly, I'm just glad that I made it all the way through this and that it's, it's over, honestly, but the world, the world is still pretty crazy, so I'm going to have to deal with that as well.
While some of us are now allowed to leave our homes, that's not the case for our most vulnerable populations dealing with this pandemic. So some local high school students decided to help get them out of the house. We're not reinventing the wheel. A lot of this technology already exists, but it's just not being implemented in the right way. This year, there were 15,000 students that took the class. And you folks, your teams were selected of all those that had the ability to present um, to be able to present tonight. Walkthrough was chosen as the People's Choice Award with 56% of the votes. We are the first incubator team from LISD to win the national pitch. COVID-19 forced us to shift into more of an online environment. And that was actually a good thing because we had to do that at some point anyway. A huge challenge was not being able to present in person, right? Because when you're pitching a company idea, you want to be there in person because people aren't just investing in your product, they're investing in the team behind the product as well. And so a huge challenge was being able to adapt and create something that would still be engaging. Because when we originally created a slideshow, that was with the intention of being able to present in person, because they're gonna look at us 80% of the time. And the slideshow is just like supplemental material. But you know, when we tried Zoom or we tried iMovie or Final Cut and all these other softwares, an issue was, you know, we don't want judges just staring at the same slide for more than 90 seconds because their attention span is gonna have them look elsewhere. So just being able to animate that and basically turn ourselves into temporary graphic designers uh, was really a big challenge. But I think that was a learning process for the team as a whole and also allowed us to kind of build up skills that we're gonna have to use down the road because we've kind of accepted that this is the new normal and this is how future pitches are probably gonna look like in the next six months. I think this is gonna be a time that is going to test our resilience. It's gonna test our sense of kindness to each other. It's gonna test um, just our strength and our ability to have hope. And I think every day we have to model those traits for every single one of our kids and the people we serve because um, they're gonna need it from us. My biggest lesson out of this is that the most important people in your life are the people who are closest to you and that you can always, always rely on them. That's why I teach. I teach because I love my kids, and I got to know these kids even through Zoom. <laughs> we can do it. We can do it.